tells you how long it had been since that area had been cleaned up. Mm -hmm. You found bottles from when? The 1930s. Wow. Yeah. It's unbelievable. What was that? Was it a Coke bottle? Yeah, there was a couple of Cokes, a couple soda bottles that I'd never even heard of that brand. And of course, your, your beer bottles. Yeah. Ormond Beach Scenic Loop and Trail is 30 plus mile double loop of roadway transversing some of the most beautiful and diverse natural scenery remaining in all of the coastal central Florida. Suzanne Scheiber of Dream Green Volusia, who raised over 26000 which was used to match the Volusia County's echo funds and other sources to purchase 36 acres that border the loop from a developer recently. It was not on the list for adopt a highway. Mm -hmm. And so I got the county to um, um, add it to the list for adopt a highway. So now I'm looking for either a church or a business or an organization to adopt this highway for cleanup. And my understanding is, is the cleanups would happen quarterly. Mm -hmm. So that would help this situation. And it, they would be responsible for this road and they would get a sign on this road with their organization name on it mm -hmm. or their business or whatever, whatever they are. So this is really needed on this highway. My organization is not large enough to tackle an entire highway like this. I'm happy to work with someone, but I'm not going to claim the highway myself. Um, I can help advertise for the cleanup day so that they get more participation, but I'm really hoping for a business or a church or an organization that has more people to get out here because this is a very large area that is trashed. So that's what I've done um, recently. I'm still hoping for, um, in the meantime, I'm hoping for an organized cleanup to come up here and um, I'm debating whether to organize one myself but I'm working across the county and I do have a lot on my plate. So um, we'll see, we'll see how this goes. I'm hoping to find an organization to adopt the highway quickly, not take months or you know years to do this. Yes. yes. So on this side of the road, it's conservation land that's owned by the state of Florida. But there are very small parcels located within the conservation land that are privately owned. So right now, there are two parcels that are literally on the road that are up for sale within this large swath of land, but it's not the whole large swath for sale. It's two individual parcels on the road. And so we have a for sale sign um, right here where we're standing. And a lot of people drive by and they think this whole thing is for sale. So it's, it's not. The two parcels that are for sale are zone RC, which is resource corridor. So they actually have limited ways that they could be developed. It's not zoned for residential, it's not zoned for commercial, it's resource corridor. So the public has to pay attention because we don't want this rezoned, right? We don't want all of a sudden two houses or some small business to show up here randomly on this scenic loop. Maybe they need more than one trash can out here, one dumpster, because this is the only one. There's mm -hmm. not one on that side of the road, and there's not one, to my knowledge, on the other side of the bridge. Right. It probably was the county, though, because now yeah. there's a sign up here that says no dumping. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that's that wasn't new there one. before? That's new. Yeah, that's new. Okay, that's good. Yeah. The garbage can, when I was up here, 
people were putting their trash on the ground next to the garbage can. Makes so sense. there were like bags and, of garbage. So I asked them if they would come, but it looks like they did, but it's already full again. Yeah, it probably fills up quick. I'm thinking that, because we were just saying there's only one. There should be at least two. Yeah. Yeah, one on each side. Yeah, right. Remember to like the 70s and 60s, you know, for So still I did not realize that the trash was so bad on the side of the road mm. until um, I was up at Plantation Oaks a lot and going on, right? Right. And um, I was walking, most of the time I was on Plantation Oaks Boulevard, but I was on the road itself and um, the news reporter was there and she told me to go walking down the side and she was gonna ask me some questions. So I walked about 10, 15 feet and she backed up yeah. and I happened to look over in the woods and there was all this trash. And I'm like, is this just, yeah. it's in the vegetation and you it's can, uh, really sad. <laughs> so, yeah, and you know, I was so happy to hear what you were doing and what how it played out. Yeah. Uh, even if we only contribute a very small amount, more people make a much larger small amount. Hey everybody, my name is Captain Scott Cornelius, better known as Captain Corn, right here at the beautiful Tomoka Outpost inside the beautiful Tomoka State Park. Um, and today I wanted to talk a little bit about the environment and garbage along the, the Loop Road. Um, and just in general in the area, you know, we have a lot of people move into the area. Um, and, and there's a lot of accidental litter that comes with uh, just people in general. We see it here at the store, which is why I, I make it my duty to make sure if I see something, I pick it up. Um, and when it comes to the Ormond Scenic Loop, you have accidental trash and then you have non-accidental trash. Um, and then you have mowing activity, you know, which is necessary through the government. And there's not always ways to pick, that there, there hasn't always been a system of uh, picking it all up before it gets mowed. You know, when you take one piece of trash and then you mow it into 20 pieces of trash and you multiply that times a million uh, over 20, I think the loop is right about 24 miles long. Um, that's a lot of garbage. And a lot of the times it ends up in the river if it doesn't get picked up or ends up deeper back in the woods, uh, it ends up in a bird's nest or in some other animal's home. So as a small business here inside Tomoka State Park, uh, we've been here about five years and we love to, if you see it, pick it up. That's our number one rule. But when you have a stretch that's 23, 24 miles long plus uh, alongside a road, that's not something we can do. That's not something any individual can do or even a small group. That's going to take an army of people to pick it all up. Uh, so hopefully our goal is to get more people involved. Uh, get the roadways adopted, get people out there picking up trash on a regular basis, do a safe method of doing so since it is alongside a roadway. Lots of long hand pickers, lots of gloves, lots of garbage bags. The cost of garbage bags alone, it would be astronomical when you really add it all up because really a black garbage bag costs about a quarter to 50 cents depending on the thickness of the bag. Um, the hand pickers, the gloves, then you need people. Then you need the safety because again, it is alongside a road. You need orange flashy lights. You need a vehicle or something similar blocking to make sure that the people volunteering their time to make the world a better place aren't really put in any harm's way. Um, so I'm hopefully uh, helping create an impact on the environment in a positive way because it affects us personally. I was a born and raised local. I love to see the environment. I don't like to see garbage. As a business inside of a state park, it hurts when you see garbage float up in the river that didn't even come from the park but blew in off the side of the road um, so hopefully me spreading this message will help with the overall emphasis on getting the loop cleaned up and getting these roads adopted and getting some big big groups of people out here uh, to all donate and get 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 things cleaned up for a better place for all of us thank you so much that was very